Welcome to the Hip Hop Task Force. It's Tuesday. That means it's Tupac Tuesday. We got a guest on the line going to talk about Tupac. Let's see who we got. Danny Boy. Yo, what's up, bro? Uh, how you doing? I'm good, man. Uh, I appreciate you doing this for me. No doubt, man. I thank you for having me, bro. I'm sorry I had something in my mouth. But I appreciate you uh, taking time having me. Yeah, I've been a fan of yours. So I'm so glad to talk to you and make sure you get to see what you got going on and everything. Oh, that's a blessing, bro. Let's get okay. it. All right. So um, tell me how you got started singing and everything. I was with an uh, independent company out of Chicago by the name of, uh, well, I guess I should, I, maybe I should start here. started singing. I started singing at a young age back in church. Probably when I was about seven, eight years old, I got up and sang in church. Okay. So how did you get down with uh, Death Row? I was with an independent company out of Chicago by the name of Raw Dope. Uh, which had a group by the name of Fuski. They were over at Interscope Records, and they had the group Crucial Conflict. And, uh, you know, we was out in California shopping a deal, and Warner Brothers and the Capitol Records and a couple other labels were uh, on the table for me. And uh, Suge, Suge uh, put a deal on the table with, like at the last minute. That was, you know, kind of just something that was really special at the moment because the money was, the advancements was great. And uh, Death Row was hot at that time, so it was, you know, a great move for me. So what was it like? You was on Death Row at a very young age, so what was that like being young and being with Snoop and everybody? For a minute, it took me to really catch on, like, where I was, because I didn't, you know, the, the most rap that I had been around was Crucial Conflict, my cousins. And I really wasn't no rap dude, but once I got to L.A. and met those dudes and kind of seeing what they were and I was calling back telling everybody who I was around everybody was a little more excited than I was so I immediately <laughs> kind of you know caught on that hey man you know Snoop Dogg is the man you know so uh, it was amazing man I was I was, I was the youngest dude that was around and uh, I, I eventually was you know like a son to Suge and, and you know it was great I, I couldn't complain at all man great experience okay. I gotta talk about the infinite moment at the source of what you wish you on stage what was going through your mind at that time, and how did that situation come out? I mean, you know, Pac was real adamant about what happened, you know, as far as him getting shot in New York and him feeling like Biggie and, and Puffy had something to do with it. I don't know too much about the story, but, you know, Pac was my boy, and Suge was, uh, 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 you know, flirting with the, the fact of going to get Pac out of jail, you know, and it was like, you know, we riding with Pac, so... Just going up there, it was so much stuff going on because the East Coast, West Coast thing was, you know, kind of like building up. So, you know, a little bit you kind of felt feel a little dangerous. But, you know, when you was rolling with a team like Death Row, you know, feeling feeling scared, uh, feeling like something was going to happen, that wasn't even that wasn't even in the program. Okay. So, um, when you first met Pop, what was you feeling like that moment or what it was like or how did you first meet him? <laughs> when we went to get Pop in jail, man, it was kind of crazy. Um, uh, I, he got on plane, man. Uh, we was on private jet. I didn't even, not on the plane, but in the limo. I didn't even realize that that's what Shield was going to do. Pick Pac up. I knew that he was going to visit him. I had been a few times there while Shield was in there visiting him and David Kenner. And I sat across the street in this restaurant all the time. But one, you know, this one time Shield went to get Pac out. Didn't know it. He'd come back out, man. You know, we talked a little bit and Shield was. Tell him how I knew all the old school cuts and this Danny boy, he sang, the pop was like, blow something. You know, man, and just went on into a full out concert, man. I was singing every song, every old school song. And uh, I just remember singing Sam Cooke, Change Don't Come. I sung that like one time for dudes, man. And I think every time I seen Pop, or we was in an environment where we wasn't working and we was just chilling or kicking it or something, that would be one of the songs. He would be, man, sing that song for me, DJ. Sing it one more time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tupac Tuesday on the Force Radio. We got Danny Boy on the line. Yeah, so um, like y'all had did a lot of songs on all our eyes on these albums. So what was like the studio chemistry y'all had? Like how did this stuff come about? Well, you know, we worked in a studio called Can Am in Tarzana, yeah. California, and it was this studio that was, you know, back like in this industrial area, and this was our studio. Death Row had rented it out like for the years that Shook had it, and there was an A and a B room that they had, and. Most of the time, I would be in the B room. Pac would be recording in the back room, in the A room, you know, and we'll be in there recording. And I'll be in on the mic working on my album. 
and, and Parker coming up while I'm on the mic. Danny, boy, I got something hot for you. Come in. Right while I'm working on the mic, recording. You know, and he called me in the back. And before you know it, I would start singing and start writing and singing and singing. And uh, anything that he had really done, I had singing on it. If it wasn't myself or uh, Jewel or, you know, on that singing, you know, it wasn't no singing on it because we were, we were the singers around. Yeah, it worked out good because y'all had some, a lot of hits y'all done. Oh yeah, man, it was amazing, man. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even, I guess I didn't even realize, you know, how how big it was gonna be. And uh, some of those songs, you know, I can't tell you, man. Some of those songs, I was, I was, I was totally out of, totally drunk recording songs at the time. You know what I mean? And not thinking that they were gonna go anywhere. Just to know that people still, you know, 18, 19 years later, people still recognize, you know, recognize and respect those songs. What was your favorite, like, two-time home video? Like, the most? Being on a video shoot was kind of interesting with Pop. You know? Uh, the studio was, that had became, you know, a ha- it was more like school, because when you think Pop was then you wanted to be on your, your A-game, because Pop could bring some vibe to the studio. Everybody wanted that same work as the, the Pop had. You know what I mean? Everybody was trying to outshine Pac because Pac was coming in and cut records like five, six records a day. You know what I mean? And for R&B dudes to go in there and try to cut at least two songs a day, that's really good. Doing all the background and stuff like that. So you kind of school when it came to the studio part, but when it came to like seeing Pac on a video set or, or something like that, man, it was really amazing because you know you could see all of his characters. It was like he dude was so happy when he seen cameras around. He was like a whole different person. He knew who he was supposed to be, so I think uh, 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 on a vi- on video set, the California Love video set was really, really, really uh, deep. Uh, actually, the Amy Madison video shoot was was incredible because you know when he walked out and he started seeing all those looking like you know he was like, damn man, did you see see that Nat King looking nigga? That Nat King looking nigga? That nigga look like Nat King? You know, he was saying, you know, and the motherfucking Red Fox look like Red Fox. This shit's scary. <laughs> That's all he kept saying, you know. So, you know, that was really incredible too, man. Just seeing dude that work behind the camera, in, in front of the camera. So, what the idea was just like to have like the red pots and uh, that king. Uh, I, I, I was just like, man, I think the director kind of came up with that idea, man. Uh, and it was, it was, you know, for me, it was really after seeing it. Pac never really seen I Ain't Mad at You video. You know, the next time that I, and, and the first time that I seen Pac video, he was he had just been cremated. And to see to see everybody emulate an artist that was already deceased and legends that was already passed that had passed on and to hear Red Fox say, you know, you gotta earn your wings to get into heaven. And it was a heaven scene, man. I was freaked out. I hurried up and got back to Chicago. And I'm like, wait a minute, hold on, this I'm the only nigga living in this kind of you know, I, I thought it was some kind of prophecy but it comes to pass. You know, but uh, yeah, he, he never really seen that video, man. Yeah, it's a great video. Then I was thinking like, cause when everybody was saying Pop was alive when they saw the Cross It Up video, and what you got going on currently? Oh uh, well, you know, right now I'm just working on the gospel album, man, and really working on my ministry. Uh, there's a, 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 a my ministry that I'm just, you know, just helping somebody just make it through, man. Uh, make it to uh, I, I've, I've experienced so much music through. I just think that God has so much more in store just for me to just kind of inspire and touch somebody musically you know there's a lot in me I've experienced a lot the, uh, the over the years I've changed a lot over the years you know since the death row years so I'm just really interested in that man and, and, and I have a campaign that I'm working on that's called uh, Love Against Suicide uh, I was dating someone that committed suicide this past December. And, uh, you know, I just want to kind of help some other people, you know, that may be suffering. Uh, suffering with, with, with depression or that we may not know about or suffering through some things because of, you know, uh, who they are or, you know, the ways of life that they choose to live. You know, different things like that. So I just want to kind of just touch people, man. I'm free spirit right now. And I'm hoping that uh, eventually I'll get, get some music out there, you know, for the fans and, you know, people to hear and support. Yeah, because you got you got a good voice and you made some good music and I know fans want to hear some more and even new people want to hear, like, what Danny Boy got going on. Well, that's a blessing, man. I, I, man, I don't take it for granted at all. 
I, I, I don't take it for granted, man. If you really still check for me, I know it's been a long time, long journey. People always ask me, you know, where I've been, and you know, and in, in, in the favorite words, I like to hear people when they say, you know, this person fell off or this person fell off. You know, uh, you know, ask for the best of me. I don't feel that I fell off. I feel that I fell into something. Uh, being on death row, uh, I fell into a great opportunity, man. Uh, that a lot of people would, would, would live to just be a part of that history and be a part of that moment. And uh, I don't want to relive what I've done already. I want to be able to create something new and create some more legacy and some more history. You know, well, if you need anything, you know, I'm right here to help you out any way I can. Well, I appreciate it, man. I'm going to definitely get you some music real soon, man. Please, you know, just uh, send some people to my Twitter. My Twitter is the real Danny Boy, T-H-A-R-E-A-L, Danny Boy. And uh, my Facebook, that's, I think that's, I don't even know what my Facebook is, but I think it's under Danny Boy. Go to my fan page and leave like that. And uh, look out for the campaign again, Love Against Suicide. Okay, well, I appreciate you. I just want to say my favorite song you did was um, It's Over Now. I still bump that to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, bro. That's amazing, man. Thank you so much. It was one of my favorite cuts, man. That was a hard song to record. I recorded yeah. that song. Hey, I had a call with that with that song, and I kept saying, oh, man, I got a call. Baby face is like, nah, you're going you're gonna to sing today, man. Yeah. Baby face wrote that song, right? Yeah, baby face wrote it. Yeah, he wrote it and produced the vocals. Yeah, because I, when I first heard it, I was like, damn, this boy, this is the hot joint right here. And I just kept playing it with some baby. Thank you, man. I just wish it was, you know, a different time. Or not even just a different time. I just wish it would have received support from the record label that that song needed. Because that song was dope. Yeah, I would have loved it. Yeah. You know, it came out with baby face. was really, really baby face. You know, everybody wants yeah. to work with baby face. So. Yeah, I was a little surprised. I was like, damn, they plays with Death Row, too? I'm like, y'all doing good things over there. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. I, did, I, did, I did another cut with it. It just never was released. And we never finished it, actually. Yeah, I bet you got like, a lot of catalog over there. Man, they got, a lot of, they got a lot of records to dump. They got Death Row now. Uh-huh. They got a lot of music. They don't know what to do with none of the music they have. It's got a great catalog. They bought the catalog, but they didn't have sense to, you know, uh, uh, know how to know what to do with that, bro. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time, and then, like I said, we'll try to touch bases again. We just need to we'll do another interview, talk about that, what you got going on in your campaign and everything. Okay, bro, just stay in contact with you. Let me know when you uh, publish or however you do the interview. Just uh, put some links to it. Okay, I will. All right, thank you so much, bro. All right, thank you. Be blessed. Things I threw